Welcome to corporate finance. Welcome to Chapter 7 of Ross Westerfield and Jordan Fundamentals of Corporate Finance Problem Solution Videos. Let's go on to 7.1. Is YTM on a bond the same as the required return? The answer, yes, for non-callable bonds expressed as a nominal annual interest rate. Is YTM the same as coupon rate? No, R is not equal to coupon rate. Coupon rate is on your bond. Uh, YTM, or little r, is rate required by all other bonds in the market. Suppose a 10% bond today sells at par. Two years from now, the required return on the bond is 8%. What is the coupon rate on the bond now? What is the YTM? Coupon rate is still 10%. That never changes. If it's a corporate bond, usually that's for 30 years. That would be paying a $100 coupon on a $1,000 par value bond, and YTM is now 8%. All other bonds in the market are now requiring 8%. Your bond is has a 10% coupon rate, paying $100. All other bonds in the market are paying $80. You have a premium bond in your hands. Problem number two, you buy a 7% coupon 20-year bond today when issued. If interest rates go up to 15%, what happens to the value of the bond? The bond equation is 1. Bond value is present value of the coupons plus present value of the face. C times 1 minus 1 over 1 plus R of the T. All of that over R plus FV over 1 plus R of the T. Chapter 6 plus Chapter 5. Bond value goes down as interest rates go up. So interest rates move and bond values move in opposite direction of interest rates. As R goes up, as interest rates go up, the required rate of return on all other bonds in the market or YTM goes up. Price of the bond, price of your bond goes down. So be careful if you hold bonds in times of increasing interest rates. And in problem number three, German company has 3.6% coupon rate bonds on the market, 27 years time to maturity. If the YTM or rate required by all other bonds in the market is 3.2%, what is the bond price in euros? Not in dollars. Watch your units. Always watch your units. So the bond value is C times 1 minus 1 over 1 plus R to the T. All of that over R plus FV over 1 plus R to the T. So doing it longhand, I like to break these problems up into two pieces, the present value of the coupons plus the present value of the face. So the present value of the coupons is using chapter 6, which is C times 1 minus 1 over 1 plus R to the T, all of that over R. And the present value of the face is uh, face value over 1 plus R to the T. It's always 1,000 over 1 plus required rate of return to the time of T. T in this case being 27 years. And I get a bond price of 1,071.60 euros. In Connect Excel, we can also use the equal price advanced Excel formula. So to do that, I need to set up the syntax properly and get everything in the correct order. So uh, what we have there is equal price. I'm looking for the price of the bond in euros. So I take first D cell D30, settlement date. We're going to pretend it's at the beginning of the year. And D31 is maturity date, 27 years later. It's not a semi-annual bond, so I don't have to go C by 2, R by 2, T times 2. We'll just use 27. And then D32, which is the coupon rate, 3.6%. And then D33, which is yield to maturity, rate required by all other bonds in the market, 3.2%. And then it's going to grab D34, which is the face value. And for some reason, the way Excel has this hardwired and coded in, they want it in hundreds versus a thousand every other time. Whenever you plug it into a formula, whether it be on scientific calculator or a financial calculator, you're going to type in a thousand. But in this case, we're going to put in a hundred and one coupon per year because it's not semi-annual. And so that's uh, D35 and then comma zero. And then times 10 because that face value is coded in as 100, and I should get the same answer using the advanced Excel formula if you're doing this in Connect. That is the formula you'll have to use because that's how McGraw-Hill programmers programmed it in using these advanced Excel formulae. Uh, and there are your answers to problems one, two, three. 
In problem 7.4, Japanese company has 3.4% coupon bonds with 16 years time to maturity. The bond sells for 96.318% of par value, par value being 10,000 yen. Again, watch your units. What is the yield to maturity? So we see that we have a discount bond selling for 96,318 yen. And uh, it's a discount bond because they're not willing to pay me 10,000 yen par value. So it's a discount bond. What does that mean? That means that my coupon rate is less than all other bonds in the market, or YTM. So the YTM is going to be higher. I'm going to start guessing higher if I'm solving for those three R's in the one bond equation. Uh, again, bond value using that one equation is price of the bond today. Bond value is C times 1 minus 1 over 1 plus R to the T. All of that over R plus FV over 1 plus R to the T. Present value of the coupon plus present value of the face. In the advanced Excel formula, I'm going to use the equal yield equation and connect Excel. Equal yield, left paren D45, comma D46, comma D47, D48, comma D49, comma D50, right paren. So again, I like to do it the uh, mathematical way, the longhand way, using the one bond equation, break it up into two pieces. What is the present value of the coupon and present value of the face? And then I need to hit the price of the bond at 96,318 yen. So basically, I will just go in here and start plugging in numbers. I'm going to start above 0.034, and I'll stop when I hit the bond price of 96,318. So basically, I go into this cell and start plugging in numbers and stop when I hit, when I see that that bond price hits 96,318. YTM happens to be 3.709249 dot dot dot. Took that out to eight decimal places to get an exact bond price. Present value of my coupon is 40,481.25 yen, and the present value of the face is 55,836.75 yen. And again, the way I find the rate or yield to maturity is by plugging in cell D51 and keep changing it till I hit 96,318 yen, and that will make equation good. Looking at the equal yield advanced Excel formula, uh, here we have, again, we have to set up the syntax in order. Very simply, settlement date, maturity date, annual coupon, bond price, face value, coupons per year. So I set the settlement date randomly at 1100, and I have my maturity date 16 years later at 1116. Uh, the annual coupon is 3.4%. 0.034, the bond price I'm trying to hit is 96,318. The face value is 100 yen. And again, I have to put in 100, not 1,000 or 100,000. 100 and coupons per year is 1. There is no semi word semi-annual in this problem, so I'm going to put 1. And my formula that I will type into this blank cell in Excel is equal yield, left paren D45 which is settlement date, D46, which is maturity date, D47, annual coupon bond price, D48, face value, D49, and coupons per year, D50. And I should get the exact same answer, 3.709-24936. There are your answers to problem number four. Problem number five, Nikita has bonds with eight years time to maturity selling for $962. Again, I have a discount bond selling for less than a thousand par. Uh, yield to maturity is 5.1% and the coupon rate or C over $1,000. Again, not a, this is not a semi-annual coupon bond problem, so uh, we'll get our coupons once per year in dollars. Bond value formula is the same, C times 1 minus 1 over 1 plus R to the T, all of that over R, plus FE over 1 plus R to the T. And again, I set the syntax in order so I can use the equal price equation, but in this case, I'm looking for the annual coupon. So 1100 is my settlement date. Maturity date is eight years later. The annual coupon I'm going to continue guessing at 
till I hit the bond price of 962. Yield to maturity is 5.1%. That's the rate required by all other bonds in the market. The face value is 100. Again, that's the way Excel requires us versus 1,000 to code it in. Uh, one coupon per year. Again, bond price is $962. So again, I break this formula up into two pieces. Present value of the coupon and the present value of the face. And I just plug these in in order. Equal D62 times D64 times 10. I have to multiply by 10 because D64 is not 1,000. It's entered as 100. So I can multiply by 10 times 1 minus 1 over 1 plus D63, which is 1 plus R. Uh, raised to the T, which is 8. And divided by D63, which once again is R. And that will give me my present value of coupon of 290.30. Present value of face is... FV over 1 plus R to the T. So D64, which is face value times 10, that'll get me to 1,000. And then divided by 1 plus D63, which is the rate or yield to maturity, raised to the eighth power, I get a present value of the face of 671.70, add them together, and I get a bond price of $962. So there's your answer to problem number five, 4.5097% is the coupon rate. Let's go company has 15-year bonds issued in number six one year ago. So that means there's 14 years left at a coupon rate of 5.4% semi-annual payments. If the yield to maturity is 4.5%, that's a little r. Rate required by all of the bonds on the market. What is the bond price? Again, I'm going to set up the syntax to get ready for the equal price equation because that's the way Connect Excel requires it. With regular Excel, I can do it either way. I can use the original bond value equation, C times 1 minus 1 over 1 plus R to the T. All of that over R plus FV over 1 plus R to the T, or I, or I can do equal price. And again, I have to multiply by 10 because I'm going to plug in face value at $100 versus $1,000. So in the syntax, Sales settlement date is 1100. That's a made up date. And I'm going to set the maturity date as 14 years later as 1114. My annual coupon in order is 5.4%. Yield to maturity is next in line in the syntax, 4.5%. Face value is 100, not 1,000. 15 years are my time to maturity, and yield to maturity is 4%, 4.5%. The number of coupons per year I put in here is 2. And then Excel, advanced Excel will take care of that. C by 2, R by 2, T times 2. If I plug it into the regular formula, I must still do C divided by 2, R divided by 2, and T times 2. Still must do that in the longhand equation, because Excel will not do that for you. So I take uh, the long form Excel formula, I break it into two pieces, present value or price of the coupon, and present value of the face, and then add them together and get a bond price of 1092.74. Let's see, that means that I have a, now I have a premium bond. My bond is selling for higher than $1,000. Why is that? That's because my coupon being paid paid on my bond is $54 annually and the all other bonds in the market are only paying $45 per year, 4.5% times 1,000. So that generates, gives me a very nice premium bond. You want to buy my bond? You have to pay me more than $1,000 and that's because my coupon rate is higher than the yield to maturity of all other bonds in the market. And there are your answers to problems 4, 5, 6. In problem 7.7, .7, Ashburn Corporation issued 25-year bonds two years ago. Coupon rate is 5.6% semi-annual payments, so C by 2, R by 2, T times 2. Bond sells for 97% of par, or $970, which means it's a discount bond. And what is the little r, yield to maturity. Same bond equation, C times 1 minus 1 over 1 plus R to the T, all of that over R plus FV over 1 plus R to the T. The advanced Excel equation equal yield. We're looking for yield to maturity equal yield. Left paren D92, comma D93, comma D94, comma D95, comma D96, comma D97. So we must set up our syntax according to the Excel structure or syntax, I like to call it. Settlement date first, 1100, which we make up 23 years later, because it's a 25-year bond two years ago. So 23 years left, 1123. Annual coupon rate is 5.6%. The bond price 
97.00 out of 100. Again, we don't set that uh, according to $1,000, we set it according to $100, so 97. Face value is 100 instead of 1,000. It's the way Excel wants it coded in. That is the syntax, as I call it. Coupons per year is two. It's semi-annual, and they want to know the yield to maturity. So again, I set up the formula such that uh, I break it into two pieces present value the coupon, present value the face, add them together, and I get the price of the bond. So I'll keep making changes to cell D98 until I hit a price, a bond price up in the upper right of 970. So again, I type in the present value of the coupon formula in here, remembering that I must multiply T times to C divided by 2, so the coupon divided by 2, the rate or yield to maturity divided by 2, and the T times T. So you see I have 46 in the equation instead of 23. So I'm doing C, the coupon, divided by 2, the rate divided by 2, and the time times 2, C by 2, R by 2, T times 2. And I break it into present value of the coupon, which is C times 1 minus 1 over 1 plus R, the T, all of that over R. And then present value of the face is face value, future value, divided by 1 plus R to the T, remembering again to, if I'm going to use cell uh, D96 at all, I must multiply it by 10, so we're effectively plugging a 1,000 into this equation, and then also my R by 2, 1 plus R divided by 2, and then t to the T power, T times 2, so I'm plugging in 46 instead of 23. So I just go down into cell D98, and just keep plugging in percentages. Now, where am I going to start? Uh, I see that I have a discount bond. That means that all other bonds in the market are paying a higher coupon rate than my bond. My bond's paying 5.6% of $1,000 or $56. All other bonds in the market must be paying 5.7, 5.8, 5.9, some rate higher than 5.6%. So I start in this cell, start guessing 5.65, 5.7, 5.75, 5.8, Five point eight five. Whoops, went too far because that bond price will go more than nine seventy. So I just keep uh, playing with this uh, number, doing iterations until my bond price hits nine hundred seventy dollars, and I get an answer of five point eight three eight seven percent is my yield to maturity. And I do note that it is indeed higher. So all their bonds in the market are paying more than my bond is paying. My bond's only paying $56 or 5.6%. All other, Annually, all other bonds in the market are paying $58 and about 39 cents. Therefore, if I'm going to sell my bond, I'm not going to get $1,000 for it. I'll only get 970 in problem 7.8, we have Dream and Corp with bonds with 14 and a half years time to maturity, yield to maturity, 5.3%, price of 987. Once again, a discount bond. They want to know what are the semi-annual payments and what is the coupon rate. Oh, they don't want to know semi-annual payments. This does pay out semi-annual payments. So C by 2, R by 2, T times 2. And they do want to know what is the coupon rate. Set up my syntax again. Set them in this order. Settlement date, maturity date, annual coupon, YTM, face value at 100, according to Excel syntax, and coupons per year is 2. So I'm looking in this case for the annual coupon and I'm going to, again, break the uh, problem up using the longhand formula into two pieces, present value of the coupon, present value of the face. Present value of the coupon is C times 1 minus 1 over 1 plus R of the T, all of that over R, remembering that I must, uh, in the longhand formula, divide my C by 2 and divide my R by 2 and take my T times 2. So instead of uh, 14 and a half years, I'm going to plug in 29 in this formula, both these formulas. And so I did that, and I keep I go down here to cell D108 and keep, let's see, and keep plugging in different numbers until I get a bond price of 987. Now again, where am I going to start? Well, uh, you see that with a price of 987, we have a discount bond again. That means that my annual coupon uh, will be, guesses will be lower than the yield to maturity of all other bonds in the market. So I'm going to start at below 5.3. Maybe I'll start at 
5.1, 5.2, 5.3 is too far. I'll stop. I'll start at 5.1, 5.15, 5.16, getting closer and closer. And when this bond price hits 987, I know I've hit my magic number, and that magic number is 5.1704% is my annual coupon. So just keep plugging in that coupon rate until you get your desired bond price of $987, and I did that. In problem number nine, I have a zero coupon bond with a par value of $10,000. So this is an unusual amount. This bond has no coupons. So coupon C is zero. Time to maturity is 24 years. My yield to maturity is 4.2%. Semi-annual payments. What is the bond price? Same exact bond formula. Bond value or price of bond today is C times 1 minus 1 over 1 plus R of the T. All of that over R. Plus face value over 1 plus R of the T. But in this case, C is zero. So this whole big mess in the middle of the equation is zero. So I'm left with chapter 5. The price of the bond today is equal to, so PV equals FV over over 1 plus R to the T, so it becomes very, very simple to calculate the bond price. So if I divide this into two pieces again, the present value of the coupon is zero because C is zero, so that whole big mess in the middle of the equation goes to zero, and I'm left with face value over 1 plus R to the T. Note again, since we have semi-annual payments, I must divide C by 2, okay? And I also must, if I'm going to use this syntax, I must multiply by 10. So anyway, I keep changing and looking for the bond price so I can I can very simply uh, wait till I hit the bond price of 3687.77 by using the syntax. Again, settlement date is first, maturity date is 24 years later, annual coupon is zero, YTM 4.2%. And that's given, $1,000 face, 24 years. The coupons, number of coupons per year is two. And I type in the formula, equal price, and the syntax is equal, uh, left paren 121, 121, 122, 123, 124, 125, and then skip to 127. And that will get me a price of, and it should be, a discount bond, a severely discounted bond because there are no coupons to be paid. So I'm going to pay a lot less for this bond when I buy it today and it's going to grow to a future value of $10,000. So that magic number is the price of the bond is $36.87 and 77 cents. And I can do that the advanced uh, formula way using equal price. Or I can break the bond problem, longhand bond problem, into two pieces and add them together. And she'll get the same answer. She'll get the same answer, 36, 87, 77. And there are your answers to problems 7, 8, and 9. In problem 710, Yanyan Corp has a $2,000 par value bond with a coupon rate of 4.7%, 13 years TTM. Yield to maturity, or little r, is 5.05%. Semi-annual payment problem again, what is the bond price? This is a premium bond. It sells for more than $1,000. So we take note of that. We notice it as semi-annual coupon. So I'm going to go C by 2, R by 2, T times 2. Again, bond price is equal to C times 1 minus 1 over 1 plus R of the T plus FV over 1 plus R to the T. And the advanced Excel formula for bond price is equal price. Left paren D137, comma D138, comma D139, comma D140, comma D141 divided by 2, because we have to put it in terms of $100, Excel syntax, and then D143, and then times 20, times 20. And that will get us to the bond price we're looking for. Now we expect the bond price to be, let's see, should be lower than the par value. Bond, what is the bond price today? It is something less because my annual coupon is only $47 on a $1,000 bond, twice that on a $2,000 bond. And the yield to maturity, uh, all other bonds in the market, on a $2,000 bond is paying over $100, 5.05% of 2000 So those are the givens. Again, I set up my syntax, settlement date first, maturity date second, annual coupon, YTM, face value, years, and coupons per year. And I put the appropriate 
uh, select the appropriate cells, D137, and the equal price formula, D138, which is maturity date, D139, which is the uh, annual coupon, D140, which is the yield to maturity rate required by all other bonds on the market, D141, divided by 2 because I've got to get back to a base of 1,000, so that's if I put 200 in there, that would be uh, divided by 2, and D143 is coupons per year, and then multiply all that by 20. And we get a bond price, if we do that, of 1933.87. Checking it out the longhand way, which is present value of the coupon, C times 1 minus 1 over 1 plus R to the T. All of that over R. You can see that I divided my C by 2 in the formula. You can see I multiplied my T times 2 because I'll have to go visit the paying agent twice per year. So instead of 13 times, I'll have to go in there 26 times. So you see the word, the number 26 in the equation. So I go C by 2 divided by 2, R divided by 2, which is D1, you see D140 divided by 2, and then T times 2. You can see I took the time of 13 times 2 in the equation, and I get the present value of all those coupons of 888.05, and then the present value of the face value. Again, I have to go R by 2 and T times 2. So there you go. And notice I'll have to multiply the face value by 10 because it's not 2,000, it's 200, and I have to multiply that by 10. And then I take the little r divided by 2 and the t of 13 times 2 and plug in 26 and check my work, and I get a bond price of 1933.87. Now I ask myself, what kind of a bond is that today? And that is a discount bond. Why is it a discount bond? Because my coupon rate, 4.7%, annual is lower than all other bonds in the market paying 5.05%. In problem 7.10, I have Union Local School District with a 5,000 par value or face value bond. Again, it's a difference, not your standard 1,000 as in most corporate bonds. This is a school district bond, a municipal bond, if you will, with a $5,000 par, coupon rate of 2.9%. 16 years TTM, yield to maturity 2.7%. That's the rate all other bonds in that market are paying. Semi-annual payments. What is the bond price for this union local school district? Your school district pays bonds or sells bonds, and so you might encounter this in your local area. This is a municipal bond, still same bond formula. Longhand C times 1 minus 1 over 1 plus R of the T, all of that over R plus FE over 1 plus R of the T. And I can use the advanced Excel formula and connect equal price, left paren D153, 154, 155, 156, 157, divided by 5 because it has to be on the basis of $100. And uh, D158, and that is the number of years till maturity, time to maturity. So that's the syntax that Excel requires. Place in order, I also check it by doing the longhand math. So the present value, I break it into two pieces for simplicity's sake. Rather than have one really, really long equation, I plug in part of it into two different cells. One, present value of the coupon. Again, I have to remember we have semi-annual payments, so I must divide C by 2, R by 2, and multiply T times 2. So instead of 16, you'll notice I type in 32 into this equation. You notice I multiply to get the C, I have to divide, or I have to multiply face value times 10, because the face value is, the par value is 5,000. If I plug in 500, as required by Excel, I must remember to multiply that by 10 when I'm doing the longhand formula. And then I break the other piece into the present value of the face value, which again, I have to multiply the face value times 10 to get the 5,000, represent the 5,000 in the equation. And I must divide the uh, yield to mature by 2, and I multiply the T of 16 years times 2. Notice I put 32 in the equation, and I get a bond price of 51.29.23. And I ask myself, what kind of a bond is this school district selling? Well, it's selling a premium bond because it's selling for more than the par value. Why is it selling for more than par value? Because the annual coupon it pays is greater than what the rate paid by all other bonds in the market or the YTM. My bond with 2.9% at Union Local School District 
is higher than the rate being paid by all other bonds in the market, which is 2.7%. Therefore, I have a premium bond. Both methods, whether I use the equal price uh, calculation or if I use the a long equation, I still get the same answer, 51, 29, and 23 cents. And problem number 12, 7.12, I have a T-bill paying 4.6% total or nominal rate of pay. The inflation, or H, is 1.9%. What is the real rate of interest? Little r. Approximately, I want to do the approximate Fisher effect in my head. So big R equals little r plus big R is 0.046. So big R equals little r plus little h. Little h is 0.19. So little r is gotten by subtracting total return or nominal return minus the h. So 0.046 minus 0.019 gives me 0.027. So the approximate Fisher effect is 2.7%. And then I plug it into the full Fisher effect equation, which is 1 plus big R equals 1 plus little r times 1 plus h. So uh, in this case, I'll divide 1 plus big R quantity divided by 1 plus h. And I will get an exact Fisher effect of 2.65% approximately, 2.6497. Very, very close to my Fisher effect approximation of 2.7. So very easy to do and very easy to check your work on this very important concept. There are your answers to problem 10, 11, and 12. In problem number 713, we have more Fisher effect problems. Very, very important concept uh, to learn. This will affect you when you get your first raise in your, let's say, after your first year, because inflation will be eating away at that raise uh, right away. Real rate of return is 1.8% in problem number 713. Inflation is 2.7%. Total return on the T-bill is how much? So when we're looking at total, we're looking for nominal. We're looking for big R. Big R equals approximately R, plus, little r plus H. And the approximation, I always encourage you to do the approximation first, know the rough answer, and then use the exact Fisher effect second. So the approximate Fisher effect is very simply R plus H, or 1.8% plus 2.7%, or 4.5% is your answer approximately. And my exact Fisher effect should be close to that. It is equal to 1 plus little r times 1 plus h, and then I have to subtract 1, bring that 1 over from the other side of the equation to solve for r, and I get 1.018 times 1.027, all that total quantity minus 1, and I get a total exact nominal answer of 4.55%. We see our approximation is very, very good. We get a very close read. And the reason for that mathematically is R times H is a very, very small number. That'd be 0.018 times 0.027. So that kind of falls off the table to a very, very small number. And I'm left with an answer that's very close to the approximation. And problem number 14, 7.14, I have Janice Yellen. This must be Janet's sister. Uh, says the real rate will be 9%. Little r, investment offers a total return, big R of 11.7. What is inflation or little h? Equation is the same. Big R equals approximately R plus H. And then 1 plus big R equals 1 plus little r times 1 plus H. The approximate answer will be big R minus little r. And so that'll be 0.117 minus 0.09. And I get an approximate answer of 2.7%. That's my guess. Putting in the exact numbers, I take my total return, which is big R, and I divide by little r. So 1.117 divided by 1.09. That quantity minus 1, and I subtract 1 to get the exact inflation rate of 2.48%. So again, the uh, approximate's roughly not too bad. It's at least in the ballpark, and I get an exact Fisher effect of 2.48%. Finally, in problem 7.13, I have a total return, or big R, of 14.1%. I have an H of 2.83%. And what is the real rate of return? Again, I can get the real by taking the total big R minus the H, 14.1% to minus 2.83%, and I get an approximate answer. The final answer should be around 11.27%, very approximately. And when I plug it in, to the exact Fisher equation, I take 1.141 divided by 1.0283. 
minus 1, and I get an exact rate of uh, still close to 11%, 10.96%. That is my exact real rate. And there are your answers to problems 13, 14, and 15.